I think the nature of music is something that you want to work with others. Yeah. Ultimately, you definitely want to like work alone. <laughs> That's actually something else that um, I wanted to ask you. Um, since we're talking about industry, what are some challenges as a musician that you faced? And for um, young musicians, young, young and upcoming musicians who are watching, how do you think they should like approach these problems and challenges to be able to overcome them? I think a lot of the problems I've had is artist development mm -hmm. because the thing about modern day music and the, the industry that we're in now is like everybody wants to be successful and mm -hmm. everybody wants to be, you know, quote unquote famous. But it's not really always realistic, but also it's really hard to get to that point because like years ago, you would you would like go to a record label and they'd give an artist a load of money to develop them and make them an artist. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, labels don't want that. They want a, an artist ready made, full package Absolutely. with fifty thousand followers. They're already <laughs> sure. making x amount of money. They've already got merchandise, and that is so overwhelming for any independent artist to mm. sort of conceptualize it's massive like and i think even now it's it's even hard for me to realize that like even if you want to be an independent artist on a small scale you still need to be doing those things because those things are going to help you because at the end of the day as an artist it is about being an entrepreneur and if you haven't got those sort of skills, mm. it, it's so difficult. And I've found it really, really difficult sometimes to get my head around that. That it's not, it's also another thing, it's not just years ago where you'd have like an album and like a couple of music videos. Now you need to have a music video, a lyric video, a live video, <laughs> a live acoustic video. You, you know, it, it, the list goes on and it's costly. It's so sure. costly to do projects to a decent standard where you're happy with it because then, you know, there's the argument that, oh, well, if you don't put the, the money in or, like, invest in your in your project properly, then it looks cheap or it doesn't sell or, it, it you know, or you're not going to get streams because you haven't got a music video. Mm. All this, it's just, it's really, really overwhelming. Too much information. It's, yeah, it's just too much sometimes. I just wish artists could just be artists and just make music <laughs> and that's how easy it was. But there's all these things that you have to consider when you're making music. It's not just about the music anymore. It's about the package. Mm, of course. Since we're on that, do you think social media has helped you personally as an artist to be able to promote yourself or generally for artists? I Does it make it easier for artists 200%, to exist? 200%. I think social media is possibly the best thing that could have happened to artists because, you know, as I said, going back to what I said before, mm -hmm. years ago you'd have to go to a record label, send them your demos and get an artist development deal in order to even get a fan base a lot of the time. Obviously, people might argue that, you know, you can go out and, like, gig and things like that. That's another way. But generally speaking, that was the way you got into the industry. Sure. Nowadays, you're seeing people like KSI, who was a YouTuber, mm. now performing headline gigs at massive festivals and collaborating with people like Anne-Marie and major mainstream artists. So sure. social media is a massive platform for anybody to utilise. And unfortunately, you've got to do social media if you want to be an artist to any degree or producer or anything in music. Because even if you just want to be, for example, a cover singer, mm. just going around singing at weddings or you know singing in pubs and restaurants, you still need to have an online presence because then... People need to see that, oh, she is singing in such and such a place. Oh, well, I'm going to book her for my restaurant now. So even mm. if you want to be not even an artist, just a general gig and musician, like in a function band, you still need to have some, some somewhat small presence online.
Mm. I couldn't get that out. Then I kept stuttering. <laughs> no, that, that's very true, though. That's very true. Yeah. As you said, I I do believe myself that social media help, especially like platforms like TikTok. Yeah. It really helps people to be able to. I love themselves. TikTok. Oh, it's amazing. It's such it's a, a fun platform. A lot of people are like against it, saying, "Oh God, it's just." I think the musicians that are against TikTok are stupid because it's, you know, we don't know when the next platform that's mm. going to blow up like this. Like, that sort of window of opportunity with TikTok is kind of narrowing down now where, like, you could, say, like, a year ago, you mm. could gain a massive following on TikTok really easy because it was less saturated. Now everybody and the mother is on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So that, like, market gap where you could blow up really easy and get a massive following is now, like, narrowing in. Mm. And you still get, like, musicians scoffing, being like, it's a kid's app. And, like, mm. it's not a kid's app. It's more a, than a kid's app. Amazing tool. I always I always say to people who are against social media, I would say it's like a tool. You take it out of your toolbox, you use it in a proper way, yeah. and you put it back, put it back. in its place. Exactly. Uh, otherwise, if you get, like... Um, get stuck in scrolling, Yeah, you're going to be there for but a while. <laughs> it's like a loop that goes around and around and around. So take me into your creation process when you want yeah. to create music. How do you approach like making your songs? Well, I think for me, writing is obviously the first thing that comes to mind. So I'll write so a song. You best write the, write the whole song. Usually, yeah. Before okay. I go into production, <laughs> like I'm very, I'm very backward. Not maybe backwards, maybe not. But because I do work alone a lot, some people when they're writing songs in sessions or whatever, you know, they produce as they go and mm. they get the ideas. But for sure, me, sure. because I write on my own and I produce on my own, I write the song first. And I can once the song's pretty much finished, I can figure out where I want it to go production-wise and I'll get ideas. And then I'll go into me, DAW, I use Logic, and I'll just you know get the basic like chords down on the guitar or the piano and then build some right ideas up around that Mm -hmm. and then just take it from there and then i'll know where i want to take it then and then just work on it forever (laughs) so i'm happy with it and then i'll that's it you're gonna have to refine it and refine it yeah i think so and then i always i always have friends listen to it or like people in general or like my managers listen to it to say what needs fixing here what can I do better mm-hmm. here how can I make this sound better mm-hmm. bigger whatever the case and then so I you just, have a mentor no but I've got no. managers well technically yeah they are mentors really aren't they yeah so I've got I've got managers so do you think they have like a big influence on the improvement of the process in terms um, of maybe quality or Probably, yeah, because um, I'll, for example, I'll send like me stuff off to Pete and I'll say, what do you think on this? Mm. And they're very um, happy for me to do whatever I want. They don't really get involved so much with, with that aspect. Mm. But the feedback is often what I need to hear, like whether what could be improved or oh, that's a demo that needs this or I think you could add something else there. But they never really tell me again directly you should put this instrument in it here and mean. do this and do that and no it's they'll, like a they'll, suggestion yeah they'll give little suggestions yeah. but overall i've got a lot of artistic freedom of what i want and i'm pretty like solid on how i want something to sound and mm. I'm, I'm good at like making it sound pretty decent by the end of it before I even send the demos off. But I do like to send demos off because I get too excited before they're done. I'm like, listen to it. And they're like, yeah, it's good. It's not done. I'm like, I know, bro. (laughs) (laughs) So let's say I'm Daisy Gill. Yeah. I want to write a song. Yeah. Okay. And I get stuck in the middle of writing a song. Mm -hmm. So what drives you and inspires you emotionally? to be able to finish the song? What are the things that you do? what the song's about, but I think in general, if I get stuck writing a song, I just leave it for months. Oh, <laughs> and then okay. I just leave it. Hmm. Like, nothing out of me, the last track I brought out, I, I just left it because I couldn't finish it. And then a few months later, I went back to it and finished it. So it just depends. But there's a lot of the time with myself when I'm writing a song... 
I pretty much finish it within a day or two because I, I get that into what I'm writing and what I'm, you know, doing with this track. So you let it happen. So I let it happen naturally. It. Okay. I don't force it. Like if, as I said, if I, I get stuck with it, I just leave it because you're just going to end up getting writer's block and you're going to feel awful. Mm. You're going to feel shit about it. So I just leave it for a bit. But most of the time, I just get so hyped to write a song that it, I just finish it. But I don't know if that's just because I've got ADHD and my brain. That's another thing. Like, the way I work is very, maybe, I don't know, different to other people or maybe it's the same. I don't know. Mm. But when I, for example, write a song, because I hyper-focus on a lot of things, like, I could be producing a song for 10 hours straight and I won't have a drink of water because I'm wow. that interested. Seriously? Yeah. 10 I'm that hours? In, oh my but God. I'm that interested in what I'm doing. I, I and, understand what you're saying, but that's like a but that, real uh, focus. That's, like, it's, it's, it's like <laughs> that's beyond. That's another level But then I can't focus. focus on other things. So. Wow, that, that's amazing. But that's, no, but that's like the, the joy and the curse of having ADHD. It's like when I am really interested in something, I can hyper-focus on it to the point of like obsession. Okay. But then on things that I don't really have interest in, like maths, I failed that five times or four times now. So mm. that's I always say ADHD is kind of like my superpower because it's kind of technically, you know, a mental disorder or disability. But it's something that in my everyday life and in my music actually helps me. Mm. But sometimes is a disadvantage. In, in different ways. So. That's it. No, nothing is necessarily bad or good. No. It really depends how you look at it. And how you manage it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. very true. So, like, from the, your experience, like, performing music, busking, doing events and stuff, yeah. what is the funniest thing that has happened to you in um, the past few years? A lot of weird things happen when I'm busking that I capture a lot on TikTok, so... What's the funniest thing? Like... But would you when when funny? I get just weirdos like trying to rob me mic or I Seriously? get yeah or I get like <laughs> strange people come up oh, to me yeah. just like uh, loads of weird things happen <laughs> funny things like, I would be forever like there was robbing the mic yeah what, what, what or there was this do? one time a guy come round and he had like a big baby costume on because they were on a stag do and they were oh, like okay. will you sing never gonna give you up. And like everyone was dancing, and it was like the whole of town was like, I'm never gonna give you. I was like, oh my god, and I didn't film it. It was before I did TikTok, it was like two years ago, and I was like, oh my god, and everyone was like crowding around me. It was really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there something that people misunderstand about Daisy Girl? I don't know. Probably. In my personal life, probably, yeah. I, I, Have you came across anything in particular? Um. I can be like really aloof sometimes and I don't mean it. How how come? What do you mean? I just like I can be closed off a little bit sometimes and I don't I don't mean to be that way. I just get like I don't know. I think because I, when I was younger I used to get picked on a bit when I was like smaller. So I think I'm always a bit standoffish with people at first that I don't know and I think I get really uncomfortable with people that I don't know in a weird way. So if I don't know someone, I'm like, it's different, say, for example, if someone from TikTok come and saw me, which has happened a few times, like, since I've got a little bit of a platform on TikTok, mm -hmm. if someone comes up to me and says, like, oh, like, I love your TikToks, and they say hello or whatever, I'm, I'm okay with that, but it's different things. It's like, sometimes when I'm meeting people in social events, like, friends or something, mm -hmm. I, just, I just find it really hard sometimes to, like... Be, I don't. I think I'm able to go through that thing, but I just found it really hard to be like sociable. And I think people have got like a misconception, probably that like I'm a bit, a bit of a bitch, and I'm I'm not. I'm just shy. But, 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 but I think everybody's like that, you know. Until probably you, you, until you have some kind of a connection, in this case with the other person, it's just it just gets a bit too much yeah. if they're coming too strong. You know what I mean? I don't think there's any misconceptions about me. I don't think people care enough about me at this point for there to be any misconceptions. <laughs> but I try, like, I always, I always try and be polite and, and nice to people all the time because I think that's important. Um, That's, like, one of my main things that I try. 
Because you don't know who you're speaking with. Like, if sure. I meet someone on the streets, for example, and I'm busking, and they come up to me and, like, they want to talk afterwards, I always be polite, even if sometimes that's got me in trouble. And I think that's another thing is, like, it can be scary sometimes when you're busking because you're always thinking, what's this person coming up to me for? Are they going to come up and say something positive or are they going to be really mean? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to be drunk and be a nuisance? Or are they going to pretend to be nice, but at the end... I've had some really weird experiences Mm -hmm. with people, so I think that's where the social anxiety probably comes from a little bit. And that probably because I was, like, kind of, like, a bit dorky when I was younger and a bit Mm. weird that people kind of picked on me. So it makes me a bit, like, introverted. Where I come across really extroverted and I'm like, hey, everyone, and it seems like I'm dead, like, bubbly, which I am. But if you don't know me, I can just be a bit shy at first. (laughs) Like, everyone, really, I suppose. That makes me normal. But it's good that you keep your mind open to new experiences. But but as you said, you will never know who you're going to meet. No. And what's going to happen? It might be a record label offering you well, something. for you know? example, last year I was out busking and um, so I didn't know who it was, but someone who's, someone who's like daughter plays for Liverpool, mm-hmm. the little kids one. She's got like 5 million followers on Instagram. Okay. And they come up to me and I didn't have a clue to it and obviously I was really polite and stuff. And then they put me on the story and then I got like... a. I think it was like a thousand followers in a day that's because it. They, they put me on the story. I was like, that's my it, God. That's it. I might be exaggerating. I think it was like a couple of hundred at least, but it was ridiculous. So you don't know who you're going to meet. And I always think it's important. To be Let's just keep nice. ourselves open to new experiences. Yeah, because you just don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. You don't know who you're going to meet along the journey. Absolutely. If you're going to be rude to people, it's just not going to go very well, is it? So if you go back in time, mm. is there anything that you would change? No, I think life's too short to worry about changing things and um, you've just got to live life to what it is and, and everything that's happened to me in my life has been a, a lesson or and it sounds cheesy or it's been a blessing. So I don't think you can lose in life. I just think you can either win or you can learn and that's, that's the way I see it. I don't regret anything. I just think it is what it is and just keep moving forward and keep staying positive. Amazing, amazing. And between the songs that you've released, I know that you've released five songs, right? Between them ones, which one do you like the most? Um, (laughs) And and why? Nothing out of me because I produced it myself. Mm. And it was the biggest song that I've produced in terms of like... It was such a big project because it was so current mm. and modern pop. And I don't think people realise people like snuff pop music and say it's crap and it's shit. But there's so much work that goes into making a modern day pop song of sound course, of course. the way it does. And it took me a lot of work to get there. And I did have help. But, you know, I did do the majority of the work on my own. I didn't mix it and master it. That that's what I was gonna ask because um, people's perception is that like it's 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 a sample. You downloaded some version, yeah. you just sang on it, you know, stuff like that. But they don't see like behind of the curtain kind of work. I know that you gotta write the song, refine it, and refining yeah. the composition, arrangement, mixing, and mastering. Yeah. And that when you even got the whole song, that's only a beginning. Exactly. Now you got to see how I'm going to market this song. And, well, that was the next thing I was proud <laughs> as well. That's another reason why I was proud of that song is because I feel like I marketed it properly and I thought about everything. And it, 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 got, it got, you know, all right little views on, on Spotify and stuff like that. So it did fairly well. It's done, it's done the best out of all of my songs on Spotify so far mm-hmm. to date. And I think that is probably because... I did invest in getting me aesthetics right and making it sound right and promoting it properly and marketing it properly and thinking about all those things. Because I used to just put a song out and be like, yeah, it's out, go listen. But no one's <laughs> going to listen to that. Of course. It, there needs to be something else behind it. Absolutely. So you I think that's why it. I'm proud. You got to back it yeah. up. Amazing. <laughs>